Hi, Dr. Nicole Rothman here, and I'm really excited to talk to you about what happens when you're fasting. And we're gonna go hour by hour specifically, but first I wanna talk to you a little bit about the benefits of fasting. The first benefit is that, which many people don't realize, is that as you're getting through a longer fast, your body starts to make stem cells. So stem cell production is, is part of your body healing. And this is absolutely the, one of the most amazing benefits that you can get. And I myself have had experience where I had uh, a, an injury that required surgery, a total reconstruction essentially of, of my shoulder and I had really long-standing chronic pain for over a year and a half after, no matter what type of exercise I would do, the rehab, I did everything I was supposed to do. I would still have pain at the end of the day. And after my very first five-day fasting mimicking, I actually, the pain went away and I've not had that horrible pain that I was having every single day ever since. So I believe that stem cells came into play and my body healed finally. And so definitely if you've got old injuries or you just wanna optimize your health, stem cell production is really amazing. And the other, uh, there, another benefit is autophagy. Autophagy is where your body actually goes through the process of basically self-eating. You're eating your own cells because there's no food coming in, so the body's looking for food sources. So old senescent, old damaged, worn down cells, that's what your body's gonna go after first, and it's gonna use that as fuel, so it's literally an absolute cleanup. All kinds of cells get cleaned up, so these bad cells, they're not adapting well for your life, and your body's gonna use them as energy. Another benefit is ketones. So when you run out of glucose, your body actually looks for additional food sources, just like it does with autophagy. It's also looking for ways to survive. Your body actually goes into survival mode and that's okay. This is a purposeful step and stress to get your body to adapt. So what starts to happen as your body starts burning fat for energy instead of glucose, because the glucose is gone, is we start producing these ketone bodies that are a phenomenal source of energy, not just for your body, but also for your brain. And as those ketones kick in, people really notice that, that mental clarity that comes with fasting. Another wonderful benefit of fasting is energy diversion. So when you stop eating, a tremendous amount of energy is now available to the rest of your body for healing. So, so much healing can happen when you're not digesting. We spend so much of our energy just breaking down food and processing it and eliminating it and absorbing the nutrients so your body gets to actually have this time where it can rest. Um, hormone optimization can also happen. In particular, testosterone, growth hormone, both get ramped up during a fast. These are wonderful fat-burning hormones that a lot of us would love to have, uh, but it also helps so that you maintain your muscle mass during a fast, which a lot of people are always concerned, hey, am I gonna lose muscle? But between this ramp up of hormones, as well as the stem cell, first the body does break down old cells. So, you know, for if you're working out a lot, I work out like six days a week. So I'm sure I had plenty of uh, old muscle cells that have been worn out, damaged, and we're getting rid of those now and your body is flooded with new stem cells. And so when we do start eating again and we got this up, upload, up rise, rising up of you know growth hormone and testosterone, we actually get stronger and you notice that you, you will get leaner and build more muscle in the few weeks after the fast. Um, we reset the microbiome. There are huge, uh, no, huge changes when you eat and when you don't eat with your microbiome. So when you're eating, if you eat a lot of junk food, your microbiome is going to present in a way that is not going to be for your best health. Now, your microbiome are all of the organisms, bacteria, yeast, viruses, everything that's living in and on your body, which the majority is in your gut. So we see massive overturn of your gut health 
including gut health stem cells in your digestive tract. And so this is part of this whole reset process. We take food away, allows for stress to come into the system, the body has to adapt, and we see a shift in the microbiome for the positive. So this is really helpful for people that have a lot of food sensitivities or autoimmune issues, um, especially because we're cleaning up old blood cells as well. So if you have white blood cells that are or antibodies that have gone rogue and they're attacking your own tissues, those are gonna be some of the cells that your body's gonna clean up in that autophagy process. That typically happens later on, but we will see a reset in the microbiome. So those allergies, food sensitivities, autoimmune issues, there is definitely a healing impact. And resetting DNA. We talk a lot about the genetic code um, but fasting is an ancient healing practice that actually can turn off bad genes. So if you have familial disease, like your mom had it, your dad had it, your grandparents, your sister, brother, fasting's a great strategy to kind of stop that process so we can really start to heal our body and break the chain of that, of that genetics. So let's talk about what happens in a fast. And uh, there are lots of different types of fasts you can do. Uh, extended fasting and actually uh, my husband and I just completed a five-day fast I do them a few times a year last year I probably did six of six or seven of them water fast and I did a few fasting mimicking as well but I was on a mission to do one a month and I did make it for about six seven months but now I, I just really quarterly is optimal for me but you know even just fasting for 24 hours you could get huge benefits Intermittent fasting, that's where we're only eating in a six to eight hour window every day. Some people do really well with only eating in a four hour window, but for the majority of you eating in a six to eight hour window, so let's say you have lunch at noon and you have dinner around seven, you're done by eight, and then you don't eat again until uh, the next day. So that's a 16 hour uh, fast fasting window. So let's talk about what happens because you don't have to do five day fast to get benefits. So you may also have, um, you know, do a two day fast, a 48 hour or a 72 hour fast. You don't have to do five days to start to see benefits, but the optimal stem cell and optimal growth hormone and immune system and microbiome reset is seen in the five day fast. And again, you don't have to just do water fasting. You can do fasting mimicking or partial fasting that also is very effective in getting similar results. I personally find I get the best results in the water fast, but you do get uh, awesome results doing partial or fasting mimicking as well. So in the first four to eight hours, your blood sugar starts to fall, food is still in the stomach, but it starts to leave, and insulin starts to go down. So insulin is the hormone that helps shuttle glucose into your cells. And so um, that's what we see in diabetes is that people have insulin resistance. So fasting is really, really helpful in resetting uh, glucose problems, diabetes, insulin resistance, even pre-diabetes. At 12 hours, all the food in the digestive tract is now burned and we see an elevation in, in human growth hormone, HGH. Um, we see glucagon is relaxed to balance the blood sugar out and, um, excuse me, release to, to balance the blood sugar out. And we do around 13 hours start to see some autophagy. It's not going to be the, the level we'd like it to be, but there will be some because the body's gonna start looking for some fuel sources. At 14 hours, now the body's starting to really run out of glucose at this point. The body starts converting to use fat for energy. Now, uh, people will often think they're gonna go into ketosis at this point, not everybody does. You know, there is a training process that I teach in my seven week workshop on how to get your body into proper, healthy, clean keto, but also so that you're adapted. You could be in ketosis and you're not fully adapted. So we want to have this full adaptation. We see human growth horm dr hormone dramatically increase at that point. And at 16 hours, the body ramps up the fat burning. By 18 hours, we're starting to really skyrocket human growth hormone. So in just doing 
a 24 hour fast, let's say you did one day a week, you do a 24 hour fast. Well, at 24 hours, that's where you're really starting to see this autophagy starting to kick in. Like I said, there is some that happens at 13 hours, but now the body's really depleted at that point. So it's gonna start looking for sources of food. This is also where gut healing begins at that 24 hour mark. So for many people, I know once a week, I almost every week I do, uh, 24 hour fast. I like doing it on Mondays. It just helps me get my week started. Uh, and so I say almost every week because the weeks leading up to my menstrual cycle, it, it depends on how that falls. It's sometimes I don't do it that week because that's a lot of times is a week that I actually am doing a feast week. We go through these feast and famine cycles. It's called diet variation. And I'll, I'll talk about that in another video. However, um, so at 24 hours, we're draining all the glycogen stores. So now the body has really nothing left to do except for releasing ketones. So the body's going to start really relying on ketones. That's what starts releasing into the bloodstream. I didn't test my ketones this last fast constantly. I tested it a few times a day. And when I would wake up in the morning or in the afternoon, right before, uh, you know, bed, I would just kind of gauge it a little bit. Uh, but it is a lot of fun to see what happens. For me, it was about at 36 hours, I had tested my ketones and I was finally in ketosis. I was pretty surprised. It took my body that long to go into ketosis, but obviously I had a lot of glycogen stores uh, remaining behind. I had plenty of glucose there. So it took me a long time to get to that place on this fast. So 36 hours, this is where autophagy actually goes up by 300%. So now the body's going into this major cleaning mode and just a day and a half without food, your body's doing this total body cleanup. It's just like spring cleaning in your, in your house. Think about it, right? Well, that's what's happening in your body. So what can sometimes happen is some toxins can be released as your body's cleaning up. And um, we teach you uh, in our class how to use certain supplements to help with those toxins. I do have my favorites. I can post those in the comments. So below, uh, 48 hours, we're gonna see autophagy is gonna go up at 30% more. And at 72 hours, at three days in, that's when we see autophagy really max out. So all of this cleanup is happening. As a matter of fact, usually because we're not eating, we don't usually have to go to the bathroom, number two I'm talking about. But many times, day three, we're going into day four, this is around the time that a lot of people do have to end up going to the bathroom. Depends, you know, I've noticed as I've done these fasts over and over that it has become less of an issue. The first time I did a water fast though, that's, I actually, um, you know, had to go quite a bit for a few hours because my body was just doing this absolute overhaul cleanup. And so you just have to realize your body knows what it's doing. I mean, fasting and taking food away, and taking supplements and everything away is the ultimate in allowing your innate wisdom of your body to take over. It knows what to do. It's gonna go into survival mode, but that's what we want to see happen. So at 72 hours, that's also around the time the immune system starts to reboot. So this turnover of white blood cells, these autoimmune cells, cells that are not recognizing food correctly, they're thinking your food is a pathogen, a foreign invader, and we also start to see the musculoskeletal stem cells. So I was talking about how my body changed so much when I did that first fast. So sometimes we'll actually notice that we feel old injuries. Um, you could feel a little neck pain or back pain or your foot might hurt, something along those lines. This very often is that healing that's happening because you're now starting to get some stem cells coming into the body. And no one said healing was comfortable. Sometimes it can really be uncomfortable. But knowing that your body knows what it's doing and having faith in your body's ability to heal as you go through this process, it's always also good to make sure that you set some intention for your fast and some goals that you can look at as you're going through this process to keep you focused and know that you will you will get there. We also really start to see um, by this point, we're gonna see weight loss, 
um, the ketones are going up much higher and insulin is really, really dropped down very, very low now. Um, at 96 hours, we're going to see intestinal stem, stem cells start to max out. So this, this gut healing that is happening, not only are we getting these stem cells there, but we're getting a, a reset of the immune system, a reset of the microbiome. And so the, the immune system reboot is going to continue. Autophagy is, is starting to come down. Human growth hormone will start dropping a little bit at this point. And by 120 hours, we're, that's when we're usually ending the fast, we're doing a refeed and we see this massive flood of stem cells that happen. So breaking the fast, there is a very specific way. We don't break the fast uh, with a lot of heavy foods and meats. You wanna keep it really light, some healthy fats, some um, you know really good vegetables. My favorite is bone broth. And I, I put some veggies and I cook them in there cooked vegetables better than raw body hasn't um, had food in it for a while so your stomach digestive enzymes and your acids in your stomach will come down a little bit but this is an amazing process that your body will go through as you're as you're fasting and I encourage you to to join me on my next uh, stemnomic solution fasting program I will post the link below but we always have new ones coming up. If you missed this one, you can let us know. We'll send you the upcoming um, dates. Please make sure you subscribe and comment below. I'd love your feedback. Have you ever done a fast? What's the furthest you've ever gone? Do you do intermittent fasting? Have you, you know, tell me about you. I will absolutely read the comments. I'll respond to you myself. It's a really amazing uh, and empowering Thing to go through because to, to detach yourself from food I know this this time that I went through this I was with my husband for the first time and it was his first fast so I it reminded me of my first few where we have this kind of attachment of that need that emotional attachment to food and the habits that we develop and we all have them even though I've done them so many times I had a few glimpses of that but for the most part I really don't feel that attachment anymore and it is so empowering to know you could go for days or hours or you know really without eating and you'll you know that you can do it and and you hope you'll survive you'll live a lot of times people say I could never do that. And that's exactly what my husband said. That's exactly what I said. How do these people do that? And uh, it, it, if you prepare your body for it and you lead into it properly, it is very, very doable. And that's what we do in our, in our workshop. It's a seven week workshop where we're teaching you how to get into ketosis properly. What are we looking for and how to move into this intermittent fasting and diet variation and really teach you how to go in and out of ketosis properly so that you can use this as a strategy once you learn how for the rest of your life. That's what we want for you to use these ancient healing practices so that you can follow along with our ancestors in their feast famine cycles because they went without food for quite a while and they would have a feast. So we do want to have some feasting too. We just want to learn the right way to do it. So thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and awaken wellness. Have a great day.